Hi everyone and welcome back to The Shack. And in today's episode we're taking a little look at a project you may be unaware of. And thanks to our sponsors at PCBWay, we're going to be able to have a little fun and build something cool along the way. PCBWay are also running a PCB design contest at the moment and although I'm not nearly clever enough to enter that, it did give me a good reason to have a go at a PCB design myself. So if I'm not entering the contest, why am I designing PCBs? Well, let's say you're of a certain age and you had a ZX Spectrum back in the day and you fancy reliving all those old favourites but you've been up in the attic and can't find your beloved machine or you may be a retro lover but never had a spec of your own. Either way, buying a spec off eBay can be a gamble and it will likely not be cheap. Modern recreations such as the Spectrum Next are super sexy but cost an arm and a leg which may put them tantalisingly out of reach. Other hardware solutions like the recently reviewed Sisyph 512K aren't for the faint hearted or casual retro dabbler as there are a lot of features but very little documentation. There are a ton of other hardware based solutions like the Harlequin 128K, the NGO and the ZX Uno and of course at the very least you could turn to software emulation using Fuse or one of the many other emulators out there today but that may not capture the feel of those Halcyon days. So what to do? Well we all know what this is right? Yep, a Raspberry Pi, a Model 0W in this case and I've got a load of these floating around the place. There's one in my Spectrum Next and another one in my BBC Micro, both acting as co-processors. I've got one on the bench at the moment to be used as a HDMI output for an Amiga and then of course there's the Pi Storm 2. These little things have really made an impact in the retro computer world and that's because there's a lot of power in here for around £5 for the non-W version. The bigger brother of this, the Raspberry Pi 4, is a stonking device that is a real emulation powerhouse. I have this one configured running PyMega, which just shows how versatile these devices are, because this is able to emulate not only just a HDMI output for an Amiga, but in this case, an amazingly fast Amiga in its own right, for a fraction of the price of the real hardware. So, fabulous new technology, mated with old school feelies, brought together through a newbie PCB build. Can it be done? Let's find out. Our journey begins with this amazing piece of software called the ZX Bear Emulator, which is a bare metal Sinclair ZX Spectrum emulator for the Raspberry Pi. The bare metal bit means that it runs directly on the Pi hardware with no need for an underlying operating system. Setting this up is really simple, it's just a matter of downloading the kernel image file for the Raspberry Pi you intend to use and popping it on the SD card along with some other files and some Spectrum software titles and you're good to go. Plug in a USB keyboard and you've got yourself a Spectrum, nice! However it's quite hard to use the Spectrum's keyword based token language with this keyboard and to be honest it feels just like playing on an emulator on your PC, i.e. not nostalgic at all. On the ZX Bear Emulator page the author mentions a project in issue number 67 of Magpie magazine where someone had mapped the keyboard matrix of an original ZX Spectrum to the GPIO pins of the Pi and then written some clever Python scripts to read those pins and direct them to Fuse or some other emulator running on the Pi's Raspbian OS. Very clever. ZX Bear Emulator now supports this setup out of the box and without the need for the Python scripts but it is prescriptive on which pins to use. Anyway, with a couple of keyboard connectors from an old specy, I knocked up this ugly little thing. But it works. So then I thought, hang on, I can build this into a proper PCB that will fit inside a Spectrum. So that's my little project of the moment and who better to help me than PCB Way. However, before designing the PCB, we do have to think about which Pi to use as there are some things to consider. The Raspberry Pi 0 and 0W versions are, as we mentioned earlier, quite common in retro circles as they're so small and relatively powerful but for this particular project there are some limitations. The author of the software hasn't been able to get the sound output through the HDMI port on this single core 700MHz Pi so you'd need to get the sound out through the PWM pins to an amplifier or to a 3.5mm stereo jack and there are reasons we don't want to do that which we'll come to later. The full size Pi models do have enough power in the main but they're just too darn big for what we've got planned. 
It's important to note that this doesn't yet work on the Raspberry Pi 4, which isn't really a problem. The Pi 4 would be a massive overkill just to run a Spectrum. So that leaves us with the Pi 3 Model A+, which has a quad-core 1.2 GHz processor and 512 MB of RAM. So pretty powerful, and importantly, it's small enough. And hopefully, there's one of them in this package here. Lovely. However, I can already see an issue that I'm going to have to correct in the final version of the PCB, but we'll come to that in a bit, and it's a big old whoopsie on my part. So for the PCB, I started with laying out the schematic and then designed the PCB itself. There are various tools out there for this, and I'm not familiar enough with all of them to even suggest a preference. So be like me and try a few out. The important thing is that it generates a Gerber file that your PCB manufacturer of choice can then make for you, which PCBWay did for me, and that should be in this package here. And clearly, this is only version 0.1, which I wanted to make to see if I got the dimensions right. I can adjust as needed for the final build, but also to help in the placement of the other bits I want to put on here. Now, let's address the things I did wrong so far, and then we'll solder this thing up and see if at least the schematic transferred correctly. Issue 1. The headers on the Pi. This was just a silly mistake. I've bought so many Pi Zeros recently that come with the headers loose in the box for you to solder whichever way you want. I neglected to check if the same was true for the Pi 3A+. And it isn't, and they're on the wrong side. Now I could desolder the headers and put them on the right way, but as this is a prototype, better to fix it for the next time. I'll just check it all out with the board on the underside. Won't that obscure the opening on the back of the Spectrum, I hear you ask? Well, issue two. For some reason, I can only put down to it being late at night, I've not got the Pi in the right place anyway. It all needs to move a little bit over to the left to line up properly. Doll. And lastly, issue three. This hole is a millimetre out. Double doll. Anyway, let's solder this up and see if it at least works. Well, that's not a bad job, but now it's time for the moment of truth. Does my first really simple schematic to PCB layout actually work? Well, let's plug it all in and give it a go. So here we are, moment of truth, and the Pi is booting, which means I haven't shorted anything out. That's very good. And there's a message, you need a GPIO connected keyboard, but that should disappear because it did on the protobuild version, I guess when it detects the keyboard, and it has. Symbol shift, cap shift, enter turns on this virtual keyboard mode, and with that we can access the function keys by pressing 1, 2, 3, etc. Pressing 1 brings up this file list, and we can then page down to Manic Minor. And this will be a good test of both the keyboard and the sound, so I press space to load the tape in, come out of that menu, cap shift, symbol shift, enter again to come out of virtual keyboard mode, and now we can issue the load command. ZX Emulator has a fast loader and a normal loader setting, and here the fast loader setting is on, hence the somewhat manic screen, pun intended. Now, because we've chosen the Raspberry Pi 3 Model A+, we should get sound out through the HDMI cable, which of course we wouldn't on the lower powered versions, so we should still be treated to that manic minor cacophony of noise that is the welcome screen. Ah, my ears! And to think that as a kid that actually impressed me. Luckily, the keyboard works, so I can press enter and get into the game itself. Uh, I'm not going to bore you with me playing this because you'll just laugh. But this will of course aptly demonstrate that at least the OP and space bars work, because that's all Manic Miner uses. Oh, and enter of course to start the game. Anyway, let's move on to something a little bit more interesting. Going cap shift, symbol shift K again to get the virtual keyboard, we find we've got a variety of options we can look at here. And 
A lot of these are accessed via the function keys when you're in this extended mode. For example, if I want to be using a Spectrum 128K, it's function key three. And there we are, we've got the 128K menu. And similarly, function key four would put us into the plus two A mode. Anyway, what this tells me is that this little PCB interface between the Pi hardware with ZX Bear Emulator and the good old Spectrum keyboard works a treat. So next steps are to reposition the GPIO headers on the PCB so that the Pi sits in the right place for the ports to be accessible from the back. And looking at the back, I can see that even when the PCB is sitting level, the HDMI socket is going to be a tight fit, but might be OK. The power input, though, I'll probably relocate to the hole for the Spectrum's original power supply. The bigger problem is the location of the SD card. I don't really want to have to be opening up the Spectrum every time I want to get access to the card. So that needs to be relocated to a more sensible place. And to do that, I'm thinking of using one of these extension cables. So I'm going to try and find a PCB mountable version of this connector, and that will solve that little problem. ZX Bear Emulator also has support for an NMI or non maskable interrupt button that can be used for, well, something. I haven't really delved into that yet, but I'll add a button for it anyway. And while I'm here, I may as well find somewhere for a reset switch. So the big question is with this Raspberry Pi Model 3A, does it fit inside this standard ZX Spectrum Plus case? And yes, it does. Does it fit inside a standard 16 or 48K Spectrum case? And yes, we're all good there too. Happy days. So I hope you found this interesting. It's a bit of fun and it just goes to show that these days anyone really can get into designing their own PCBs. I'll work on the next version of this and bring you an update in the next couple of weeks. In the meantime, why don't you pop by the PCBWay website and consider entering the contest. They're giving away an ESP32 just for entering and you may just have that killer idea. This time next year, Rodney. Now, before we finish, I wanted to address a couple of things. Remember earlier when I said about the ARM6 Raspberry Pis and the sound having to be routed elsewhere? My choice was to have HDMI output rather than having to mess about with external amplifiers or headphones or complicate the PCB. You may think differently and may not even want the sound. There are also other projects out there which do the same as this and much more and are based on the Raspberry Pi Zero, such as the Hermit Retro ZX Zero. So please do look at those two. There's a link in the description. For me, spending the bit of extra cash on the Pi 3A Plus and having HDMI sound and all the connectivity straight from the Pi meant that the PCB could be kept really simple and cheap. As always, thanks for watching, and if you like the video, please subscribe to the channel and hit the bell for notifications of new content. We'd also love your support either through Patreon or through Ko-Fi if you appreciate what we do and are in a position to do so. If you'd like to donate something to the Shack, drop us an email. Please leave your comments below as we always love to read them. And until next time in the Retro Shack, goodbye from me.